Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Our Drunken History with Zach and Travis. Today we are going to be talking about a city that Trav and I both have lived in twice. <laughs> we we, uh, we liked it so much we went back for a second time. Well, for sure, uh, second helpings on that. That's yeah. right, we're talking about uh, good old Sin City, the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. So, I was going to ask you this question. So. So this this the city goes back or and the area goes back almost 200 years. Uh, actually, a little bit more than 200 years. The uh, what would you think about if if you pulled a, a settler out from that was that was traveling out west trying to make a either for the gold rush or or trying to make a new life for him on the west coast and if you were pulling him out and you asked him what would you what do you think the the meadows of the old Spanish trail would look like today? Well, I, I gotta say, I think that they would think you were full of shit if they saw, yeah, you know, a city of almost three million situation situated in the desert. Where have did you ever go to Springs Preserve Park? Yeah, it, which is you know where the springs were. One of the there were several springs in the yeah. valley, but just there was. It was it was crazy how you look at the 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 way the Spanish Trail flowed. You know, you would come in and, and you would basically overnight around the Springs Preserve Park. Yeah. Or down by uh, uh, what's it called down at the end of Tropicana, where those beaver ponds are. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next day you would go to Bonnie Springs, which is still in the valley. Yeah. You it, know, and, and you, it was like it was like a leapfrogging. You would go from one source of water to the next because the area was so dry and yeah. so sparse, especially in the summertime. There, there wasn't, and that's very still much water like twenty time. miles essentially yeah. from from where the Springs Preserve Park is out to Bonnie Springs, and then you would cross over to like the Pahrump area and continue on. So I, I have to say that now, like if you go out to Bonnie, did you ever go to Bonnie Springs? They get the zoo out there, yeah. and, and the the old West Town, the the the, the petting zoo and stuff they have. Yeah, yeah, it was a cool, yeah, cool they, little, cool little there. place. Yeah, we, we used to go in the, in October. They turned it into Bonnie Screams. Oh yeah, and for they the do Halloween, the, yeah, yeah, for Halloween themed. We did a ghost hunt out there. It was ridiculous. The uh, good time. Yeah, but it was like the old it's, West. it's sponsored by the guy who does Ghost Adventures, uh, Zach Baggins, who went to UNLV. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I just I can't imagine like a John C. Fremont, who is where the the name Fremont Street, the old strip where it comes from. Yeah, you know he he explored the area in 1844. Uh, I I just I can't imagine him seeing what it is today and like just not shitting all over himself. Well, I mean it just the the difference between it is now it started off as just a a watering hole, a literal watering hole. For travelers moving through the area to the entertainment capital of the world that it is now it is it is it's the 25th most populated city in the United States right behind Oklahoma City with a 2022 estimated population of 644,594 in Las Vegas proper but in the Las Vegas metropolitan area 2.29 million people it's one of eight mega cities in the world mega cities are your Population, your technological advancements, your culture. There's several things that go into it. Yeah. Eight mega cities in the world, and it's Mexico City, Hong Kong, London, London, Paris, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Mumbai, India, New York City, and Las Vegas. And Las Vegas. When well, you think about Las Vegas, and you say Las Vegas, and you say the metropolitan area, a lot of people that don't, that haven't lived there, they don't realize that Las Vegas itself is just kind of a real central area then you have henderson north las vegas you have um summerlin summerlin sunrise valley uh there's and all it, these it, well even this most of the strip is not and most people don't know this most of the strip is not located in las vegas it's in paradise, paradise yeah. is the name of the town where the strip actually is and it's a it's a whole metropolitan area you think of maybe a equivalent like dallas fort worth it's basically two or three or multiple cities that have just all grown together yeah, to make up one and just a one big glob of of development yeah just a hot mess yeah a, a hot <laughs> a, desert a mess. hot mess yeah. <laughs> uh it is like we said the entertainment capital of the world and it has more five diamond hotels than any other city in the world i can believe that 
I mean, uh, there is, they have just really catered to the opulence and to the extravagance of, that people want. That, that they're trying to create an escape for people, and then it's just, they've just went, they, they're always trying to outdo themselves. Like, one person will build a resort that's the biggest and the best. Yeah, you got your Steve Wins and, and well, the Maloof then, brothers. And then two years later, they're out there with the next biggest and best. They're always trying to one-up each other. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Do you know the very first mega resort in the world? Was the Mirage in 1989? The the mega resort, yeah. They had the um, there they was, invented a new term. Yeah, the mega resort. Before that, it was the Las Vegas Sands was the 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 first hotel, casino, resort all in one, and then they came out with the mega resorts that came out after that. It yeah, was, the Mirage with the volcano. And yeah, it was, it was. I remember uh, New Year's of uh, it would be 2006. I went out with a bunch of buddies. And we went to the Mirage, and my friend JT won like five thousand oh, dollars wow. playing Wheel of Fortune slots, and uh, we blew it all that night. Oh man! All, he, he bought all our drinks for the night, and uh, and I, I don't know exactly how it all went down. My uh, <laughs> you don't remember how it I all don't went remember down. how it all went down. We I know I ended up stealing a stack of towels. From a housekeeper's cart <laughs> in uh, at the Mirage, and I and I I used them for years. Man, I had them for years. Those some good towels. They were great. Yeah, I used them for a really long time. We didn't even go to the rooms. I still don't know how I got those towels. But I had like twenty of them. Oh man, that's that's what you get the the uh, maid service to leave a leave a cart unattended. It was ridiculous. It's there for the pickings. Fuck, I had a good time. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a good. I did. I did. Uh, I did. Uh, Let's see, I got stationed there in 05, and I got out in 08, and I moved back to Montana. And then I was there in Montana for two years, and then I moved back to Vegas in 2010, okay. and stayed there for five, and then moved moved out here in 2016. So, so that's crazy how, so for any of the listeners that most of us, most of you don't know us, Zach and I, we didn't know each other until we actually moved back here until 2016. Uh, but we were in Vegas both times at, at the, the same, same time. At the same time frame, yeah. So I, I, I moved to Vegas. I got stationed there in 2003. I finished tech school uh, from uh, Shepard Air Force Base, uh, and I got stationed at Nellis Air Force Base in 2003. I spent there from 2003 to 2006. I got, uh, I got out of the Air Force. I worked as a civilian for a little while. Uh, got a job as a. Did you, know, you only do four years? I just did four years. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I almost did the six, uh, but I just did the, the four. I kind of kick myself every now and then for doing for not doing six, but why? But the uh, really, what's the difference? Yeah, they they almost hooked me with the the sign on bonus. They said, "I oh, will give oh, you an shit. extra eight grand to do two more you years." You know what's crazy? We would have retired this year. I know this year. Would be actually yeah. This uh, this past November would have been 19 years for me. I I would have retired in April. Yeah, November November Which is of so fucking weird. November of next year would have been my my uh, retirement. Your 20? Yeah. yeah, my 20. Would you have got out at 20 or would you would have gone? <sighs> well, you know. Let me ask you this: What rank would you have been by now? <sighs> okay, so I was. Well, I don't think I would. I don't know if I would have got busted down in here or not. But really, I would probably at least a senior by now. I think that's where, that's where I think uh, I would be. And I will tell you, if I I never got busted down as an airman, which I should have been, yeah. on numerous occasions. But I didn't. I don't. Once I made staff, I feel like I would have been fine. And yeah. I, and I made staff, and I I got out right before I was supposed to test for tech. So I, I uh, did my four years, and I uh, when I did my I I got. Senior airman below the zone. I was like a. I mean, I was a good troop. I mean, I did my. I knew my job. I did what I was supposed to brown do. Noser. I was a brown noser. Uh, <laughs> no, I just. I did what I was supposed to do. But at the, at the same time, though, I. I tested really good. I got. I got one of the highest scores on some of my promotion tests and yeah. stuff. But uh. I probably. I probably would have been a senior or a chief by now already. And uh. I don't, yeah, chief is so hard. I. I would have been at least a senior. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I, I there's we, a couple. We, everybody says that. There was I, a, I probably I probably would have been a staff sergeant for like the fourth time. Well, you never know. Well, the, <laughs> the, the thing I look at it was that there was there was one of my one of my troops, one of my trainees that I was a I was a senior airman trainer, and uh, there was a, a couple airmen and A one Cs that came into the unit that were new from out of tech school, and I was part of their mentors that yeah. that helped train them. And one of them I know is a master right now. Yeah. Well, most most of the guys that were my troops are masters now. Yeah. So then, if, for those of you who don't know the Air Force rank structure, that's an E seven. So that would yeah. be a uh, staff sergeant, I believe, in the Army. No. Uh, no sergeant first class. Sergeant first class in the Army. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a that's a gunny in the Marine Corps, right? Yeah. E seven. Yep. And fucking Navy, we don't know. <laughs> you guys got too many fucking ranks. Chief Petty Officer of some kind. Yeah, Jesus. What is <laughs> up with that? <laughs> Fuck. Uh, Come on, guys. Yeah. So. <laughs> but Let's get back on track with this. Yeah. We're, we're trying to stay more on track with our topic. Yeah, we're doing Because we, we have realized that we tend to... We go off on tangents a lot. Yeah. Especially when Which we've been Which is really cool, like, when you're just bullshitting. But we're trying to keep you guys entertained here. Though. But you know, so that 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 goes. We're we're drinking for our drunken history. So it's uh, when you're drinking, you tend to go off on tangents and rabbit holes sometimes. So bear with us a little bit. By the way, you know, we've been off on a natty light kick here lately since our our cheap beer episode. Man, I'll tell you, natty light has come fucking leaps and bounds. This this is uh, we're drinking. Saturday, Travis brought over this natural light natter days, red, white, and blueberry lemonade. And it's got a bunch of flamingos on it, all different colors. If you guys want to look, it's good for Fourth of July. We'll stick a picture. Yeah, of it guys. If, yeah, man. If if you guys are looking for a beer for your Fourth of July, and I tell you what, don't be don't be ashamed, Natty Light. This this week we've had our best week to date from our our viewers and our listeners from the UK, and I, so I just want to give you a shout out for, to the UK. Happy for Treason our, Day! Happy Treason Day from the Fourth of July and. See if you can get you some natural light natter days to celebrate the Fourth of July. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't just, getting, just drink what you drink. Getting rid of us uh, <laughs> filthy colonials and <laughs> That's right. yeah, you leave us to ourselves. Oh. Don't, don't tax our tea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had a good time over in England. Uh, I was there for the Fourth of uh, July, and no, I was not there for the. 4th. You know, I, I, I admit I left right before the Fourth. That's right. I got here. Like three weeks before the fourth, I tell you uh, what, they did a really but, good. But job. they were they were really good people, man. They they we joked around about it a lot. The colonials thing, they were great. I spent uh, just short of six months in England when I was uh, did a uh, a TDY there, and um, when I was there with that unit, we I was there from May until September. So I spent the Fourth of July yeah. in, in uh, England. I was there in Lincolnshire, England, in Lincoln, at uh, yeah. at Waddington uh, Air Base there in England, and. The whole community, it was crazy. Um, they didn't do it for us that were there because there was only maybe a half a dozen Americans that were there. It was an actual Fourth of July celebration they had at the at the uh, uh, Lincoln community there in uh, Lincolnshire, England. And it yeah, was, you know, you know what's cool about old Lincoln is uh, Travis and I were both state. We were both there at different times doing the same job with the same other people. Yeah, our, our careers were very we very, overlapped very much in places parallel. and we never really crossed paths until we got here. But now we're crossing streams every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, so Vegas was Indian territory. Yes. From the the earliest uh, Indian Native American. Sorry if I offend. Uh, the the earliest Native Americans there were. Recorded at ten thousand BC. Yeah, yeah, you had the er 10,000 10, years ago. Not 10, so eight thousand BC. It was the early uh, Pe Pueblo and Navajo Indians that originally there, and then the uh, at, but, yeah. later on the Paiute and Ute Indians uh, were there two thousand years ago. Yeah, so around the BC. Yes, I don't know if you want any Jack. I'm good for that for now. We'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, By the way, guys, I am a Jack connoisseur because. Uh, because that's not just how I roll. But I'm drinking this because Frank Sinatra used to drink Jack on a pretty regular basis. And he's about as Vegas as it gets. Yeah, old blue eyes. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm gonna stick with, with a lot of Jack tonight. And then we're going to do some other forays into exploratory yep. drinks. Yeah, we got, we got another one coming up. 
that that we'll show here in a minute after yeah, he I finishes can, that. That's a lot more than I wanted to finish. Right now. <laughs> okay, we can do that. That's how I roll. I'm going to do it. Maybe I'll run and get a different glass. <laughs> how? <laughs> yeah. So uh, so like I said, uh, the, the Native Americans were around Vegas, the area for for several years. And if you go down to the Springs Preserve, you can see a lot of their Native American Native American heritage. Yeah. In there. Um, the first non-natives to arrive in the area were in 1829. Yeah. And in 1844, like we said, John Fremont and his band of explorers were in the area. Fremont Street is where they got the name. In 1880, in 1855, the uh, Mormon Church built a fort down around Washington. And uh, it's still there. The fort is still there. It's on. It's on Las Vegas Boulevard in Washington. Yeah, it's a, it's a historic building. Uh, they they later abandoned that. Um, Las Vegas was founded as a city in 1905 on 110 acres of land adjacent to the Union Pacific Railroad property. Yeah, and that was basically a, a stop for the railroad to refuel with water and, and supplies between Salt Lake City and Los Angeles. It was basically just a, a supply stop and, yeah. and a worker stop. Uh, going back to the uh, early explorers and how Las Vegas got its name, uh, it's credited with, in 1829, uh, Rafael Rivera was a Spanish explorer that came through that area and Las Vegas literally translate in Spanish to the meadows. And uh, that's where they stopped as a rest stop to water their horses and to give them graze. Because if, if anybody has never been to Las Vegas, it's an oasis in the desert, literally. Yeah, it and truly is. There's, with, there's, there is natural springs all over that valley. But if you get away from those, like there's... Once you leave the valley, it's 100 miles of nothing in all directions. It, yeah, you got the Colorado River, historically, now Lake Mead. Yeah. Uh, because of Hoover Dam, which we'll get into. But uh, you got the Colorado River, which then you have probably 30 miles of open desert to the Springs area. And then you have another 20 miles to Bonnie Springs. Yeah. And then another probably 30 miles uphill and over the back of Red Rocks to Pahrump, where the next springs are at. So it was basically they were leapfrogging through the desert, finding one spring to the next, so that way the, because back then it was all horses or on foot and, or wagons, and you had to have a place to, to graze and, and water your horses and your Could livestock. Could you imagine going through that in like August? Oh, it, in a fucking, like a, a wooden wheeled wagon? Yeah, exactly. You think of uh, Las Vegas. If you think you're tough, you try and do that shit. The, uh, those, those old boys were rawhide leather. Yeah. What do you think of the, the, just the water situation, if you want to get into that? The Las Vegas, on average, averages about four inches of rain or precipitation a year. That's rain, sleet, snow. I didn't realize it was that little. And uh, Wow. Yeah. And most of that is in the fall and winter time. So the summer hardly gets any precipitation whatsoever. So it's only coming from underground sources at that point. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I know. My my dad came down the one year and we played golf on Christmas Day, and it was eighty four degrees. Yeah, and it was, I mean, it was delightful for him, you know, because he's from Montana and Whoa. shit. I think they had like four and a half feet of snow at his house, and yeah, he came down to Vegas, and he was spoiled. <laughs> That's one thing I can say. You know, I lived here in Arkansas my whole life, uh, without the exceptions. I've lived in a few other places, but Vegas, I've lived about nine or ten years, and it is so dry there. We were talking about this the other day at work. You know, it a ninety degree day here versus a ninety degree day in Vegas is totally different. It is so dry. It is. Yeah. Everybody with, always makes fun of people who say it's a dry heat, and I do too. But uh, it is different. It, 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 it is, feels yeah. Ninety degrees in Arkansas is hot as fuck. Yeah, and you're and, and anybody that's lived in the South, Arkansas, Georgia, Louisiana, Florida, you know what it means. If you're sitting here at ninety degrees, just standing still outside, you're gonna start sweating. It's an uncomfortable, sticky situation. Uh, but, 90 but in degrees, Vegas, it's pretty pleasant. Yeah. 90, 90 ain't bad. Now, when I was there in the Air Force, I do remember I worked swing shift. Yeah, and I remember going to start my truck. And every damn day when I would go to work in the summer, 
it was 122 degrees. Yeah, and uh, there was, was days on the flight line that it was fucking hot. Well, I yeah, because I, I worked fighters yeah here, um, at Nellis, so I, I do remember sitting out there and and just having like four F-15s, which are two engine fighter jets, so eight fighter engines basically pointed at you yeah in the middle of fucking august in vegas yep and just it's just hot on top of hot on top of hot and then if they had a problem and you had to like climb into the cockpit and the canopy was open the rails of the plane are are well they would metal. get they would get hot enough to burn you you you, you would get legit second degree burns on your forearms when you'd sit in that yeah. cockpit you know you just, anything <sighs> metal or black or, or anything it, like sucked, that man. it was it was tough I think I might have had a little bit better. I, I worked at, at Creech Air Force Base, which was, uh, I was, Nellis was technically my home base, but Creech was about 40 miles north of Las it is, Vegas. It is 40, 44.5 miles. Yeah, I think I heard the rumor was for, for, because we were stationed at Nellis. And, and if it was two miles further, you would have got paid gas money. You got it, it was like 45 miles plus, and it was yeah. like 44 and a half yeah. miles. So I think they did that on purpose. <clears throat> but yeah, but still out there on the flight line at Creech, uh, working out there, it was still scorching hot. Brutal. Some, it, it was brutal. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and you had the, 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 and even at night, because all the concrete at the Air Force Base, it, it would uh, It would just heat up and, and it would just permeate yeah. even through the nighttime. Yeah. And you yeah, just you, out there. It, it sucked. It sucked. It, but you know what? It was fun though. Still, it was. Yeah, I wouldn't change it. You know, I, I had a really good time there. I would, uh, I would do it again. Uh, I, I loved my time at Nellis. Yeah. Um, I don't get me wrong. You know, as as they say, you don't always work with your friends. So I had some people at work that I didn't get along with, but I enjoyed my time there, and I, I would do it again. I, I I went to I put in for Nellis as a follow-on from I went you know I was stationed in North Carolina then went to Korea and and Nellis was my second choice my first choice was Tucson okay Davis Mountain Air Force Base I did not get that my second choice was Nellis and I got that so I went there as a follow-on from Korea and because uh, I had been TDY out to Vegas a couple times before and I loved it right yeah then I got stationed there and being stationed there is totally different than me and TDY there yeah it definitely. And I, yeah, I thought it was going to be like a big party, and it was to a point for a while, and then I just kind of got over that. I think most people do. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize. You, you um, when we lived in Vegas, you'd have fa family and friends that would come to visit, and they would just think you're out partying all the time. You can't afford it out. It can cost too much. You can't be out partying all the time. Seven dollar beers. <sighs> yeah. So there, there's if you look at it, there is. Two different Las Vegases. There is the Las Vegas that all the tourists see, and that everybody goes and does all the fun stuff. But then there is the, the local, residential, Vegas. the residential Las Vegas. And there's and that's the thing is though, there's casinos and bars and all that stuff that all the locals go to. Yeah. Versus tourists, and that are literally half the price of of oh or, yeah or a third the price yeah. even of of the tourist areas. Like you go downtown and it's six or eight bucks for a beer. Versus getting free beer at the local bars. Yeah, the, the local places are a lot more fun. If you guys do your homework, you can do Vegas on the cheap. Have still a very good time. So, so I thought about giving them a secret. If the if uh, if they want to go to a local bar, it doesn't matter. Even the normal restaurants, if you go sit at the bar area, they have slot machines and uh, video poker machines at the bar, even at your local restaurants. Go put a $20 bill in the machine. And just every few minutes, you know, hit max bet and bet whether you're playing video poker, playing yeah. a slot, playing blackjack. And sit there and then get your drinks. And when you're eating your meal, drinking your drinks, whether it's beer, mixed drinks, margaritas, martinis, whatever. While you're gambling in Vegas, your f drinks are comped. So even at They're the not in Arkansas. And yeah. trust me... I, I found that out the hard way. I found that out the hard way when I came here, too. Yeah, I thought that all drinks were comped in all, like, casinos. So yeah. I went to... Well, okay, I've, I guess I've not gambled in Arkansas. I go to Oklahoma. Yeah, technically. Just yeah. across the state line over there. And the uh, the casinos in Oklahoma... When I got hit with a $53 bar tab. Yeah, yeah, man, I was like, wait a minute. I thought this shit <laughs> I've was I've been gambling free. this whole time, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly the same thing happened to me. Because you go to eat, 
uh, at a restaurant, you sit at the bar and you're gambling at your at your machine there at the bar, you still have to pay for your food. But if, as long as you're gambling, your drinks are comped. So that's a, that's another way so to uh, go to do so Vegas do on the cheap. Do that. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what Vegas' big population boom was initially? It was over, uh, well, I think, from my research, it might have been uh, Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam, the construction started. Started off as Boulder Dam. It well, yeah, well, it's a little it's back it's at, Hoover Dam. Well, the, the first hotel in Vegas was in 1910. It was founded as a city in 1905. The first yeah. hotel was the Victory Hotel in 1910. Hoover Dam construction started in 1931, officially 1936. But the population uh, grew from 5,000 to 25,000 people yeah. during the Hoover Dam construction, and the vast majority of them didn't work there there were people looking for work that moved to vegas they were moving there and then well and then there was also because of the construction there was tons of people that moved there to support the workers as well there was their entertainers and um the restaurants and and hotels and stuff entertainer uh, yeah. venues so that was one thing i thought was pretty amusing that uh about the history of Boulder City. Did you go and do with your research with Boulder City much? So, so to a point, I did, uh, but I'm in, I'm not in the right order here, I guess. Okay, so uh, Bo- but Boulder City was created to house the workers of the dam, and they had the bunkhouses of 480 men. Yeah. So do you hear? Can you imagine being in that shit? Do you How know much that would stink? Do you know why Boulder City was created? Okay, so think about this time. So this is the early 1930s. Uh, during the time, this is during the time of the Prohibition area of the United States. Well, even at that time in Las Vegas uh, and Nevada, the Nevada Territory at that time wasn't yeah. even a state. They said, "Fuck Prohibition. We don't even. We're not following that rules. We're gonna. We're gonna drink our alcohol out here." Uh, well, so they created the Boulder Dam, or they were they were getting ready to start. They were starting construction, and. Uh, one of the uh, the work the uh, secretaries of the interior for the United States, the, one of the I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now, but he went out there to tour the campsite and to tour the the construction site. Yeah, and he rented some workers and he smelt alcohol in their breath, and basically he was a stick in the mud. And he said, "How did he know what alcohol smelled like if alcohol was illegal? If it was illegal, exactly." <laughs> well, he said, "Well, this isn't going to work." And they created Boulder City was actually a federally controlled work camp for the federal workers under the, under the WPA that was assigned to build the the Hoover Dam, and it was a work camp that had a curfew, and the workers weren't allowed to leave town. They were supposed to stay there and go to work and go to town, and that was it. But as we all know, people. Escape from the curfew. They skirt the rules. They skirted the rules, and they yeah. went to Vegas because Vegas had their whole the district of gambling and and brothels and drinks, and so they couldn't pass that up. So they went to town and had their fun, even well, though they were, yeah. So, so Lake Lake Mead was formed by Hoover, the creation of Hoover Dam, uh, and the I ninety three, which goes. Uh, over which used to go over Hoover Dam, yeah, has now been rerouted on the Mike O'Callaghan Pat Tillman Memorial Bridge. Yes, and overlooks the Hoover Dam. I went, I went over both, and that that's a that's an incredible view. If you ever it's, get a it's chance, it's gorgeous, and it's named after two yeah. pretty important people. And uh, you can do a tour too. You can go down in the dam and and see the yeah, inner the dam bait, <laughs> <laughs> the big damn tour. Yeah. <laughs> Now they uh, when when the dam was nearing the end of construction, uh, Vegas decided that they needed a draw. They they were running out because because Hoover Dam was a big tourist draw. Yeah, initially, and then so they they needed a new draw. Do you know what they came up with? What did they come up with? El Dorado days. That's right. Do you remember El Dorado? Did you go to the rodeo? I, I heard about them. Yeah, uh, I never went, actually went to it, but I, you I know, did. always it was saw it because it was in the middle of summer and it was hot as fuck. Yeah, park. and that was to celebrate the the dam construction and the and the workers there. Yeah, so that started in 1934. The original El Dorado days was in 1934, 
Uh, and now it hosts a parade, carnival, rodeo hosted by the PRCA. Or well, it's 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 administered by the but it's 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 administered by the Pro Rodeo Cowboys Association. Yeah, because it's but for it's like hosted points. by the Elks by the by the 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 elk lodge oh okay yeah they're they're the the, the proprietors i guess you would say i guess it's because the the prca has a point system and like each of those rodeos they they can earn points throughout yeah. the circuit year and that's one of their their sanctioned events that they can earn points for their championship series for that did did you see how they diverted the water well they made the dam that was incredible they dug the big tunnels four and, big tunnels yeah two on the nevada <laughs> side two on the arizona side to route the entire and the, Colorado River. And they look like big train tunnels. They're big. They're uh, fucking huge. And then they have big uh, concrete, and they have even big signs over them. And I went, actually, I did a, uh, a float trip with through, through when I was at uh, an airman at Nellis. I did a tour through the MWR there, and we did a float trip, my wife and I. Um, we put in canoes there right at the base of the dam. Yeah. And we did a tour of the big diversion tunnels. Oh, no shit. And then, then we got in the canoes and floated down to um, Laughlin. It might have been Laughlin, yeah. Where we, where we, it was like six or eight miles that we went down the river at, and we That's hit awesome. And we hit some hot springs along the way, and it's crazy because it was at that day. It was one of the hottest days of the year. I remember because we got sunburned to shit. We were crispy, but it was like 115 degrees that day. Yeah. The, the water coming out of the base of Hoover Dam is like 40 degrees. Yeah, we did the we did the Laughlin River run. Yeah, and uh, and uh, it's like a five mile float trip. I yeah, think, where you just get drunk. But the water in the Colorado River is so beautiful, crystal clear. Yeah, that it was. I mean, it was, and it was in the middle of summer, but it was cold as shit. The water yeah. was so cold that that it was it was like the most beautiful, memorable thing. You can legit. And, I mean, we get, were we were. We got shit house drunk. Yeah, but uh, just uh, the experience itself, swimming in the river and everything, it was it was fucking great. Well, and it's crazy because I've never been in an area like that where it could be 120 degrees outside and you get hypothermia from yeah. the, from being it's in the water. It's true. Yeah, but we it was really cool because we stopped and we uh, went on the bank in one spot. Um, it's about halfway down the float from uh, from the Hoover Dam to Laughlin, I think is where it was. Or, um, and it was a hot spring so it was where it was like a 98 100 degree water coming out of the mountain from yeah. hot springs met the Colorado River so there's areas where it was nice to pause at water about, like, like a lot of times people will hike in there and then go nude into the hot springs yeah and and so like if you hike in there it'll be like naked people running around. well there's like the uh, the springs preserve and stuff like that where some of those hot springs come yeah. out of the ground and stuff where you know they uh, the water there is very alkaline and, um, yeah. and I know there's a lot of people that are on that kick now too about drinking alkaline water, uh, bathing in alkaline water, and they say it's supposed to balance your body and stuff like that. And so people would go do and bathe in those alkaline hot springs uh, on the Hoover in the in the Colorado River in the basin area where yeah. it's supposed to heal your body and soul. They say. I will bathe in my bathtub. <laughs> well, even the city water was pretty alkaline in Vegas too, so That's it was true. It you know, you know, there, there are still trace amounts of uranium. Oh yeah, in the city water from all the nuclear tests. We'll get into that as well. Oh yeah, this is probably going to be a, a two episode. Yeah, th- this, thing, guys. This. We we did. Uh, I'm like I said, I ain't much of a researcher, but on this one. I but, did go a little off the deep end. Well, the thing is, though, Vegas has such a rich history. Not only well, it's short, but it's just it's so there's so much to fit it's in. Just yeah, incredible. <clears throat> and and all of it is interesting to me, at least to me anyway. You know, because there's to you guys. But <clears throat> there's both of there's us so many is. different things that, and well, I I think Vegas appeals to a lot of people, um, in in so many different ways. In yeah. that, like. There's that gritty Sin City aspect of it. Like you go there to do those adult things that yeah. like you don't you know, you can you can't get away with wherever you live, whatever. That there's reminds- there's the you know there's just so much to do there though that's like pretty like the, the atomic muse the atomic testing museum is there, the mob museum is there. Yeah. There's a lot of really like 
rich historical aspects of that city that are not dirty gritty side. Yeah. It can it can it can appeal to everybody in certain ways. It really there is there is something that you can do is if, and I think too when they started when they switched <clears throat> kind of from the mob days to the more corporate resort area they started getting more it's not totally family friendly but there is a lot more stuff to do it's now. It's more than it was before. More than it was now. And they have events now, too, that is kind of directed towards anyone. Yeah. But speaking of the dirty ingredients getting ready to, or be, people coming there to do anything, there's a popular misconception about Las Vegas that people think, and I'll just go ahead and put it out there, The uh, there's, a, there's people that think they go to Vegas and think they can go pick up a prostitute and it's perfectly legal in Vegas. It is not legal in Clark County. It was 100% illegal in Clark County, Nevada. But... Nye County... Nye County, which is 50 miles away, right across the county line, is legal. Yep. So you can go to Pahrump. Go to Pahrump. Over the hump to Pahrump, as they say. To Nye County. And you can go to... Or Washoe The Mustang County. Ranch. The Chicken Ranch. The Chicken Ranch. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of... Uh, uh, yeah... Perfectly legal brothels. Brothels, brothels. where where Dennis the, Hoff has the one there. Yeah, he was uh, the Bunny Ranch. That's the Bunny it. Ranch. Bunny yeah. Ranch. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, there is perfectly legal. So if someone never approaches. been, by the way, don't don't sway your accusations towards me. And someone approaches you in Vegas and says it's legal, it might be a cop. So don't fall for it. <laughs> yeah, be on your toes, guys. Might get nicked. <laughs> <laughs> um. Back to Hoover Dam, <laughs> <laughs> but that was one of the things that the the twenty five thousand people that, that came to to the Las Vegas Valley to support the Hoover Dam was prostitutes that supported that had brothels for tis, the workers. Tis, so. <laughs> tis the world's oldest profession. That is right. <laughs> uh, Hoover Dam has three point two five million cubic yards of concrete in the dam itself. And then 1.110 cubic yards, 1.110 1. million cubic yards of concrete in the power station. There are 582 miles of pipe through the concrete to cool it down. So there was something I heard about that concrete too, and it, maybe if there's somebody that's listening to the show or watching the show that maybe is a structural engineer or a concrete engineer i had heard that there's so much concrete and the base of the hoover dam is so thick it's like 750 feet thick at the base yeah that it's going to take a thousand years for that concrete to fully cure so that's that is true and it's and it's not it's it's deceiving the way that that's written okay and you're yes to fully cure yes it is designed to where it actually it fully harden well it didn't fully harden it is hard yeah but it will continue to get stronger as it ages if that okay. makes sense yeah. so i i cannot say that it's fully cured but there's no longer like goopy liquid concrete in it is that okay that and there is also contrary to popular belief no people died inside Hoover Dam. There's no bodies in Hoover Dam. I'd heard that there which, somebody was. Which yeah. a, lot of, a lot of stories go back to that somebody died during the making of Hoover Dam. Yeah. But if you actually read into it, like it, it actually would have compromised the structure enough to where the engineers would not have allowed that. They would have, they would have uh, pulled it to pull the body out. So I'm not saying nobody died. There were several that died there was, during there was, the construction. I, I have the numbers on that. A lot of people died in the making of the dam, but there's nobody inside the dam <coughs> currently that died during the making of the dam. There, there, when you get, so do you have research on the... Because there was something I had a question about on people that died during the dam. I have some, but I don't know what your question is. So There were 100 to, 112 construction deaths during the dam, during the con, during construction of the dam, and several more died from carbon, carbon monoxide poisoning but they're not counted in the official total. For like digging the diversion tunnels Correct. and stuff? Correct, yeah. So there was, there was a, a story that I heard, and I don't remember the name. I should have looked that up, because but it just now occurred to me, was um, a story that I heard the very first fatality of the dam was, was a guy, uh, a, a gentleman that was working on the dam, and he was the very first person to, 
to to die working on the dam. I think he was one of the uh, the cliff workers. He was uh, rappelling off the cliff, and they were drilling and blasting the cliff sides yeah. to build the foundation. So, yeah. Bore it out a little. But then, uh, well, I think the dam took three or four years to build, and the very last person to die building the dam was actually his son. So the very first person to die I was a guy. Heard that, but that's incredible. And the last person to die was that first guy's son. Was uh, that's so unbelievable that I hope it's true. And not uh, not to shit on that family or anything. Yeah. That's just like that would be like a wild ass story if that's true. Yeah, and I, it, I, and I think, and I, th- I feel the, bad saying that I hope that's true, but I'm not gonna lie. To well, it's like, one of those things where the truth is stranger than fiction. Like if yeah, you, like wrote, you can't make that up. If you wrote that, people are like that's bullshit. But you know, really, so, yeah, it because uh, because back then too, families, especially back then, is during the Great Depression, and one of the part of the big things about the Hoover Dam construction was it was providing jobs for families yeah. or for men that had lost their jobs. They traveled across the countries, left their their family back east, wherever, yeah, and and went to Nevada to build this humongous construction project to help support the families. Yeah. And so it was dads and bringing their older sons with them to help them work and help support their families. At the height of the dam, there were five thousand two hundred fifty one employees. Yeah. It was Out of a, a twenty, so so you think about that twenty five thousand people in the city ish. But fifty two hundred employees, so yeah. that's a lot of a uh, lot of infrastructure, a lot of support structure. Yeah, that so, would be a lot of it. Yeah, um, there is enough concrete in the dam to pave a two lane road from San Francisco to New York. Okay, I think I've seen that stat somewhere. That I mean, that's <laughs> that's a long road. I'm building an interstate somewhere, yeah. Yeah, um, it wasn't officially named Hoover Dam until nineteen forty seven. It was interchangeably called Boulder Dam until that point. Yeah, because and that was a huge point of contention. Because it was uh, Roosevelt, FDR, yeah. was uh, Herbert Hoover was Roosevelt's opponent during the presidential election when uh, Roosevelt was elected. Yeah, and they Roosevelt called it the Boulder Dam at the time because he didn't want to name this huge, massive work project after his opponent. Yeah, but he is the one who ended up dedicating it. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, the Las Vegas Strip. So, so in Vegas, you have the old strip is Fremont Street, and then the new strip is Las Vegas Boulevard. And they we are, can put a map of this up. Yeah, too, yeah, we'll put a map. Yeah, uh, they're four miles apart, two mi- two and a half miles apart, I think. And originally, so where Fremont Street is now, there was um, when original Las Vegas was sectioned off or platted out on a map um, they had, had platted it off in zones and zone 15 and 16 I have to see if I can find that on a map and put that on the on the video was the only places where it's legal to drink and gamble and, uh, and that was Fremont and that was the Fremont Street area yeah um it's Fremont Street. If you guys haven't been to Fremont Street, you need to go. A lot of the old they, casinos they are there. Yeah. The, the old casinos, they have the, the big light show that is incredible that they, they put on. They have a lot of free concerts. The uh, uh, it's, it's a it's a it's pedestrian a cool. only, so that all the streets are closed yeah, off there's, traffic there's, now. And wow. I did at one point borrow a golf cart <laughs> Fremont. borrow a golf cart borrow a golf cart. <laughs> yeah my my uh my now ex stepbrother had come down to vegas for new year's <laughs> and we got a little tuned up down there and we found a security guards golf cart oh no and we took it on a ride <laughs> and we drove down fremont with <laughs> oh it was, it was terrible you know uh i'm i'm I make bad choices at times. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm, I've tuned that part out. I'll tune that. I used to make bad choices. We'll say. Yeah. Where, uh, yeah, I, I have a, I have a, I have a track record of golf golf cart theft. Golf cart theft. <laughs> yeah, that was the second one I had stolen. Oh like, man. No, yeah, we uh, we stole a, a security guard's golf cart down on Fremont, and we fucking drove that thing down the road <laughs> and uh, we left it in the alley and we got in my car and we drove home <laughs> oh man there's 
There's cameras everywhere down there. Take <laughs> everyone in trouble. That's the thing. This is, you know, hey, it's the security guard guy. Sorry, man. Oh, oh man. man. Shit. Now, how that was he, how that did was he was explain it? that to his supervisor? I don't know. It was parked right there. Yeah, but <laughs> he left the keys in it. <laughs> no, we, uh, that was in... That was 06, too. That was that was uh, that was the same night that we went. That we, my JT went on the line. Oh man, that That's was a funny. bad. That was a whole bad weekend. That was a bad weekend. We, we did we did a lot of shit that weekend. So while we're on the subject of Fremont Street, then so so the the whole gambling and and uh, district of Fremont Street, Fremont Street was the first paved street in Las Vegas, and it was the first street to have it uh, a stoplight. In Las Vegas, I did not know that. So, it was the first sign of uh, permanent infrastructure in Las Vegas was Fremont Street. That's awesome, man. Yeah, Fremont's great. I, I, free, I, I like the Strip. It's cool, but there's it's just too damn big. Well, then that's a really a lot of the things too was uh, the Fremont Street area. It, it's still very touristy, but a lot of the locals will gravitate more to the Fremont Street, old Las Vegas area yeah, than to just, the Strip. It's just, I, I did when I lived there. They have the, uh, the, the Container Bain Park. Thing. Container Park is right That's down, down there. there yeah. And uh, it's like the arts. Fremont and, East yeah. is, is uh, great, man. It's their coins. Well, I don't know if it is. It used to be down there. Yeah. You know, the, the, uh, they had the Griffin. Yeah. Like, I had a great time down there. Well, they there had go. The first hotel on the Las Vegas Strip, which is now the Strip, yeah, was the new was uh the El Rancho, the El Rancho. Yeah, but it was burned down in 1960. Uh, the Frontier was the second in 1942, and the Frontier is my favorite hotel casino of all time. That was yeah the uh, and that casino was there all the way up until the 2000s. It was yeah I, I went to the I went to the demolition. The, the, and every and I've seen a few of the demolitions of the casinos down like uh, the Frontier, the Stardust, the I'm gonna uh, get into Sands. This. Oh, I'm man. gonna get into this. And it's one of those things like yeah, you've got to make room for progress, but then it's also you're and I you're destroying history. You're destroying history because I love history so much, and it just makes me sad to see that history yeah. go. You know, Elvis played at the Riv. Elvis played at the Frontier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Flamingo was the third. Casino on the Strip, and it was built in 1946, uh, and the Desert Inn was uh, in 1960. Yeah, uh, both, as you know, were financed by the mob, and that, and the mob has a huge thumbprint in Las Vegas. The Desert Inn lasted on the Strip all the way until the 2000s before it, it was finally demolished. Yeah, the MGM opened in 1973, and for a very long time. It was the largest real hotel in the world. There was a hotel in Russia that had more rooms, but they were a third the size of the rooms at the MGM, so it was not considered a full hotel. Oh, uh, okay. But the, the, the MGM had 2,084 rooms when it opened. Uh, in, in November 21st, 1980, a resort fire destroyed the MGM. It, it burned it all down. 80, uh, 87 people died. And, yeah, and and they had had electrical problems all before that reported, and they ever never like fully wrung it out. That's what caused the fire. Eighty seven people died, and it took eight months for that casino to reopen. Yeah, there was the it was the it, there was another fire. I'm trying to remember. Look at my notes and see. The Monte Carlo had the, a huge fire. Yeah, I, I was, and there they were very that. close. No, th there was there was another fire very close to the same time as the MGM. Oh, fire. really? Yeah, and it was like a big uh, thing during the the time that it was the boardwalk. It, it might have been. I think yeah. it was the boardwalk. Well, the boardwalk got torn down, and now I think that's where. Uh, what's there now? The Aria. Or is it uh, the fucking the? Uh, There's the city center, the Cosmopolitan. Yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. That's all there. I, th I think that's all there. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So As we said, the Mirage was the first mega resort. That was that was 1989. That had Siegfried and Roy and the volcano. Uh, the Stratosphere opened in 1996. And that and actually, and I think it still holds the record. So the Stratosphere. Uh, is the tallest structure west of the Mississippi. It is the uh, it's the tallest observation tower in the U.S. It's the second tallest uh, observation tower in the Western Hemisphere next to the CN Tower in Toronto. 
It's 1,149 feet tall. There are four rides at the top, and the Big Shot was the tallest thrill ride in the world at 1,081 feet until 2010 when the Canton uh, Tower opened in China. Okay. Yeah, because uh, when I went there, it was... Uh, I went to the top with... Uh, me and my wife and I, we did. Did you, did you ride any of the rides? I didn't ride any of the rides. Uh, I did the big shot. Uh, there's, they have another one now where you can actually jump off the roof and, and yeah, off the, with the harness on. I saw that. It's, a, it's like bungee jumping, but not really. You're on a, a, a cable, and it's like a controlled descent. Yeah. And you just jump off, and they guide you all the way down to the yeah. ground at the bottom. No, I, I, uh, did, I, did, the, uh, I did the big shot. The, it was, the view is fucking amazing we did the uh my wife and i did the uh the restaurant the um the sky view restaurant there yeah. at the top and uh for our anniversary one day and it, and it's almost like um the uh i think the the space needle in, in seattle is kind of similar they have a restaurant at the top yeah. and it revolves yeah and it uh the restaurant rotates at the top the once an hour uh yeah and then you can get a whole view of the entire valley while you're sitting yeah. at your dinner it's pretty neat yeah uh, tell you what, are you are you ready for your next drink? All right, so I'll tell you a little story about a drink we're fixing to have, and see if I can bartend and commentate at the same time. Just gonna drink. So Zach and I both lived in Las Vegas for about eight or nine years, both collectively. And I had never heard of this drink, and actually until I moved away from Las Vegas. So we're going to do a Vegas bomb. Have you ever heard of a Vegas bomb? I, I never heard of a Vegas bomb until earlier tonight. Until earlier tonight. So we're going to do... But And it is a drink named after Las Vegas. I, 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 guess I the, attended bar in Korea in 05, 06, a little bit. And... Uh, you know, we literally did like five different drinks, so it wasn't a, a challenging job. But I feel like I had a good handle on the drinking thing. Oh, yeah. So uh, Now, I'd never heard of this. So we're going to start off with some Crown Royal. And there are variations of this. Some people use Crown Apple. And we're going to do a little bit of Crown. And this is all equal parts. Equal parts Crown. Some Peach Schnapps. Give it a little fruit flavor. Some Malibu or coconut rum. This is leftover from the pirate episode. Pirate rum. Some. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a bit much. So then equal part cranberry. And then we are going to top it off. So, because you, when you're drinking, you got to have enough energy to to gamble and to have fun when you're Vegas. Yeah, you got to push on. So we're going to top it off with some Red Bull, which sucks because after this, I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> so I believe we'll be an ambient type of night. There we go. So here is our our first Vegas bomb. And normally, so you would mix this drink and you do a full can of Red Man, Bull. I smell the Red Bull. And drop that shot into the. Are we, are we shooting this or are we sipping? I, you're supposed to shoot it, so I'm just going to down the hatch. Jesus, that's a. That's a big one, yeah. All right, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Put in the bath. It's pretty, actually, kind of tasty. It was enjoyable. Yeah. I think that's why the college kids like them. They're, they're little yeah, fun. that was pretty damn easy to take. <laughs> I, I can't bitch about that. I, I'd take that again. <laughs> well, we've got enough for more. Just let me know. <laughs> the bartender set it up. Did you ever go to the Bellagio? I did. Uh, well, one of the things, so like I said, when I first got to Vegas, I was a minor. I couldn't drink. I couldn't gamble. So you went to the free stuff. So I went to the free stuff. The, the fountains. We went to the volcano from the yeah. Mirage. 
We went to the Bellagio Fountains. We did all the carnival games from Circus Circus. And then... So oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So, so the Bellagio, when it was opened in 1998, was the most expensive resort in the world at $1.6 billion. The fountains cover 8.5 acres and hit... How high do you think the fountains hit when they go off at their max? I want to say, like, when the big cannons go off, I'm wanting to say it was close to, like, 200 feet or something. It's 460 feet. Dang, that is that is. Can you tall. imagine the air pressure it takes to well, push water that high? So I saw this episode of, I think it was, like, Modern Marvels or something like that on the History Channel, and they was talking about Vegas. And they have divers that would go, they clean and maintain, yeah. maintain the... Oh, yeah, that's a full-time job. Yeah. yeah. But they said they have to have do... If anybody's part of industrial maintenance, and you've heard of lockout, tagout procedures and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. they had procedures because those cannons, those water cannons that shoot that stuff so high, are so powerful that if a diver was down there working on those water cannons and it went off, it would kill a diver. When no it, question. When it, when it, the pressure yeah. that it takes to do that is, is immense. Now, uh, the conservatory. Did you ever go into the, the, the flower conservatory in there I, I, not in the Bellagio I went into a the big terrarium place in uh, I want to say is it the Mirage or the Monte Carlo they were both kind of close together yeah it was one with the tigers and they had that's the, the that's the Mirage the Mirage I went in there they had like the jungle habitat with all the tigers and you could so go I, yeah. the, the one at the Bellagio is 13,500 square feet I never it's went in that fucking one. Fucking no. enormous. Uh, and it was originally supposed to be an outdoor garden, and later on, due to the heat, they, yeah. they decided to roof it in. And then there's a glass sculpture inside the Bellagio on the on the ceiling in the lobby, and it's all blown glass. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, the guy who designed that is a cool story. You know, Steve Wynn owns the Bellagio. Yeah. Well, uh, he, he, not originally, but he bought it, I think, right? Yeah. No, he, he owned it from the start. Cause really? He, his wife, they went to the the glass sculptors. They, they wanted to do a glass ceiling, and they knew that. Yeah. And they went to the glass sculptor's house, and he had put uh, a glass sculpture in the bottom of his pool of leaves coming up. Okay. And Steve Wynn's wife looked at the bottom of his pool and said, I want that on my ceiling. And so they put a 2,000 square foot flower glass sculpture on this on the ceiling of the Bellagio in the lobby. That's oh, wow. Where that, that's where that... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Steve, Steve Wynn's wife picked that out. Well, and it's crazy because, you know, you look at the lobby of the Bellagio, the lobby of Caesar's Palace, and, and some of the workmanship that goes into that stuff. I mean, it's just a hotel when you think about it, but... Some of the craftsmanship that goes into that. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing, man. It's spared no cost. Well, and uh, that's one thing I thought was so crazy uh, about the Venetian. They have the... Uh, it's based off of old Italy and yeah. like um, uh, Venice, Italy, Venetian. Yeah. And uh, they have the gondola rides that are yeah, in there. And front, the, yeah. And, uh, but they have the... So the, you are inside the casino, inside the hotel... But you're walking through a shopping area. Yeah, they, they have the shops, the Venetian, they have the, the Miracle Mile at the the uh, Planet Ho. But well, you're 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 but, you're walking this these shops that are indoors, but it appears that you're outdoors. Oh yeah, they have they have the cloudy day and all that well, stuff. And, the and they have the ceiling and, painted like clouds. Yeah. But then it'll get dark and thunder and like you'll actually have raindrops come yeah. down from the ceiling. It's amazing. And and lightning flashes and stuff like that. It's it's crazy how yeah. that how how it, I love the it. depth they go. In, in 2006, Las Vegas lost its title as the world's highest grossing gambling center. Did you know that? Really? Uh, to Macau. Macau. Yeah. That's a... Uh, Macau. Indonesia. Indonesia. Yeah. I guess I was fixing to say Thailand, but that's Phuket, probably. Phuket, Phuket yeah. yeah. Uh, the high roller Ferris wheel opened in 2014. It is 550 feet tall, and it is currently the second tallest Ferris wheel in the world. What is the, what's the first? I thought it was the first. No. Because I thought it was... it Because no, there's the... Uh, I didn't look that up. Because there's, <laughs> there's the big, uh, the big Ferris wheel in London. 
uh, the London Eye. Yeah. And it was bigger than that. And I thought the London Eye was the biggest up to that point. No, not not. I, I, have you wrote on that the link there? I know. I never did. So my wife and I went back. So we moved here back in 2016, right? Uh, 2018, my wife and I went back for a wedding. One of my friends out there was getting married. And uh, we went out there because they were still building it when we left yeah. to, come, to move here. Yeah, I haven't been back since we moved here. And uh, so we went and actually, I wrote on it. And it's, it's pretty neat. It's it's huge. Yeah. And, but the... the uh, they have bathrooms in the pods? I think the bar pods do. There's like two bar pods on opposite sides of the wheel because they have a VIP ticket. It takes 30 minutes to do a full revolution around and they have a VIP ticket that you can buy and it's open bar for that 30 minutes that you're so the 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 whole car is a is a bar car. And so there's two on the whole thing? Yeah, I think there's two. There's on opposite sides of yeah. the wheel. And uh you buy your VIP ticket and you go in there and you can slam drinks for 30 minutes while you're in the in that bar car. And the rest of Just them are pee as much as you want. <laughs> yeah. And uh <laughs> but then there's uh uh, the other cars are just normal cars. That's what, what my, me and my wife did. And uh, But it, the the view, we did it during the daytime. And I yeah. heard it's really cool during, at night, too. But it's, uh, other than the stratosphere, it's the tallest structure on the strip. Yeah, I knew and, that. And you can see the whole valley. And you can see, it's right there in the middle. So you can see everything. It's great. That's incredible. Uh, so, going back to the views back during the early days of the strip um we should talk about the desert inn uh when it was founded it boasted that's what it it advertised was its view of the strip yeah um the desert inn, at the time it was it was nine stories tall so compared to like the uh the 108 story stratosphere or the 50 stories link that it is now the ferris wheel the, the the Desert Inn was the tallest resort on the Strip at the time in the early uh, 50s and 60s. Do you want to hear a fucked up story? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> so, Binion's Horseshoe? Yeah. Down on the old Strip. Binion's Horseshoe is a, a very historic building down on I the old I stayed strip. there once, yeah. They, well, they, they closed the hotel, and now it's just it was just a casino. I don't even know if it's even there. It was a casino, and they had closed all the hotel floors. Uh, but... You could go up to the very top, and there was a really good steakhouse up there. Yeah. And after 10 p.m., they turned it into a nightclub. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, this is so fucking terrible. They had a pool on the roof, too. I went to that pool before. They did, yeah. But I'm going to tell you a really fucked up thing I did. <laughs> <laughs> so you could get on the on the... You could get on the elevator and go up, and three floors, they had, it had a f- elevator doors in the front and the back, right? And the first three floors, they both opened up to the hotel. Yeah. But from then up, the one side opened up to outside. Okay. And the other side was into the hotel, right? Well, you would assume that there was a lock on those doors that faced out, right? Yeah. Because there's nothing there. Like, you step out into the air. Oh. They did not lock. Oh, no. So, and it was, I didn't even know how many floors, 13, 14 stories up. And uh, we went up to the casino. We went up to the fucking steakhouse the one time. It was the nightclub at the time. It was, it yeah. was after ten. And uh, just fucking around, I was fucking with the doors, and they opened up. And I was like, "Holy shit!" Like they opened up. Yeah. And like, so I let them close, whatever. And we went to the casino party nightclub, whatever. But we got fucked up. But we went to leave, and there was like. My little group of friends and, like, a bunch of people who didn't know who we were, you know. And we got in there, and I ended up on the outside. <laughs> and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to end it. And I opened the doors up, and everyone was like, <gasps> And I just let them close, I was like, nah, I'm playing. <laughs> but I, I made everybody shit their pants, you know. Oh, no. They thought I was going to fucking swan dive out. Yeah. Oh, man. But you could, it was like 13 fucking stories up, and you could just... That is nuts. Yeah, the doors didn't lock. Oh, man. It was a I did terrible not design. <laughs> terrible design. Yeah. Maybe that's why it's closed now. <laughs> yeah, it should be. Yeah. No, it, it, I I may have given people PTSD. Oh, man, that's that's great. 
But, uh, yeah, uh, the mob influence on Vegas. The, yeah, the, the, the mob was huge in Vegas. For, Vegas, for many years. Vegas would not be what it is today without mob influence. And, and I think, I, you know, you may not agree with what the mob did. They're not good people. We all know that. But the reality of it is they funded a lot of what Las Vegas is today. It's, it's crazy to think about it because you're right. Because the mob... The, the Vegas probably wouldn't be the way the mob is, and it was like a natural progression. The mob really got stuff going, and then it it transitioned later on to more corporate stuff. But yeah. the corporate stuff probably wouldn't have had a chance to do what it did if the mob hadn't have got it there to begin with. Really? Uh, well, absolutely not. Like no, 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 no question whatsoever about that. Uh, it's it's kind of cool. The mob back casinos. Like, do you know which casinos were backed by the mob when they opened? When they opened, uh, I know from my research, I know it was... Like, everybody knows the Flamingo was Bugsy's. Uh, uh, the Desert Inn, originally. The Desert Inn. Um, the Thunderbird. And then... Um, oh, is Gold Spike or Gold Nugget, something like that, from on Fremont was... The Gold Nugget was. The Sands, the Dunes, the Riviera, the Tropicana, the Fremont, and the Stardust were all mob back casinos. Well, and they were, and several of them were funded by of all people Meyer Lansky. Well, so the thing is though, and the people don't realize, so yeah, the mob funded this stuff, but and the reason why the mob funded this stuff was because the banks at the time wouldn't fund casinos. There there was these legitimate business owners was wanting to start these casinos. Well, it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the uh, mob had the money. But and and they went to the banks originally to say, to get a loan to build a hotel to build a resort a casino and the banks wouldn't loan them the money, so then they decided well, this is a really good idea this is a really good area, I can make money at it. Well, the mob funded them and the the mob just took a a cut, a cut of, yeah. of the profit, which is the same fucking thing a bank does. Yeah, exactly. The bank charges interest. The mob charged their version of interest. Yeah. And the thing is, though, some of these casinos is is crazy. At the time, they were in like the 1940s. One of these casinos that was built was three million dollars, which it doesn't sound like a lot nowadays. But that's like you go to think about inflation. That's like that's like thirty or forty million dollars, or or even three or four hundred million dollars now. Yeah, it's obscene. But once they were built, the uh, the casinos were fully were fully funded in like two years. Like one of the casinos, I think the Sands yeah. was cost four hundred million dollars to build. Within eighteen months, it was fully paid for. Paid off, yeah. And and imagine that you you borrow four hundred million dollars and pay it back and pay it back in eighteen months. Can't do that now. Fully paid off. Yeah. No, that's incredible. No, a lot of the a lot of the the casinos were backed by Meyer Lansky, Lucky Luciano, and Bugsy Siegel, which uh, I'm sure you've heard of all three of them people. Oh yeah. Uh, the entertainment had mob ties too with the Rat Pack and Frank Sinatra, which is why I've been drinking Gentlemen until I started on these Red Bull drinks because I'm a fan of Jersey Shore and all. Yeah. Riga uh, bombs. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Las Vegas is now home to the Mob Museum, and the Flamingo is said to be haunted by the ghost of Bugsy Siegel, which they have the the whole placard out there. Yeah. And the, and the, the Flamingo has a really cool uh, courtyard area where they have real flamingos. They have penguins out there. They have all kinds of animals out there. They have a great pool area. Yeah. Uh, you can tour it on your own. There's no fee. Um, just walk on through. And But there's the Bugsy Siegel memorial out there it's a yeah. really and there's said to be and i i don't know this for a fact but there's said to be uh little pathways through the casino the hidden hallways and shit oh yeah i, I can see that yeah yeah um oscar goodman is uh a, a las vegas icon yeah his uh his wife which well i don't know if she still is his, she is the acting mayor of las vegas yeah. cheryl uh, uh, is that what, carolyn carolyn carolyn, carolyn, carolyn sorry because he had reached his 
higher tenure. He ten, yeah, he, he limited out. Yeah, and then uh, so his wife basically took over. So that yeah, just kind of so, keeps the family ties going. So he made his name as a defense attorney, and he defended several mobsters, including Meyer Lansky, Nikki Scarfo, Fat Herbie Blitzstein, Phil Leonetti, Lefty Rosenfeld, Jimmy Shagra. Rosenthal, I've heard that and name. And Tell Me the Ant Spilotro. Uh, the character, Nicky Santoro, played by Joe Pesci in Casino, was based on Nicky Spilotro. And um, Oscar Goodman made a cameo in the movie uh, <laughs> as a defense attorney. Okay. Uh, his wife is now the current mayor of Las Vegas and has been since, since 2011. Yeah. Um, and during... It's funny, because Oscar Goodman, in true Las Vegas fashion did a reading to a fourth grade class. <laughs> and uh, after he did a, uh, a quote Q&A, and one of the students asked him what he would take if he were ever on a desert island. And Oscar Goodman said, if I was marooned on a desert island, I would take a bottle of gin. <laughs> <laughs> to, a, to a fourth grade class. <laughs> to a fourth grade class. Oh, man. This is so good, I don't know that I'm going to shoot it. It actually is pretty funny. It's not right? too bad. You're a good bartender, old Trav. Oh, man. So Las Vegas has, uh, for, for a very long time, Las Vegas was cut off from the major sports scene because of the gambling. There was a big worry about... Uh, Professional athletes get caught up in gambling, and, yeah, and rightfully so. Well, it's, it's a it's a it's a big concern. I think it was but, the whole uh, uh, um, Pete Rose thing. A uh, lot of it was the Pete Rose thing, yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, <sighs> didn't didn't Daryl Strawberry get involved with gambling? Is that part of the, his legacy though, too? Or was I have no yeah. idea. Maybe with with baseball and and gambling and yeah, I, I mean Vegas is, gambling is an, is is an enticing thing, and the thing that that is is it can make you throw games to yeah. gain money. Well, and but nowadays though too, and I think that's finally what Vegas realized though, because sports betting and gambling is legal pretty much anywhere. You can do it on your phone now. So the biggest problem with that is with the Pete Rose thing that pisses me off. Pete Rose bet on his team to win. Yeah, and exactly. Let the guy in the fucking and, hall, man. And he was a great player. I mean, he's, he's he literally has more hits than anybody in history. Yeah. So that dude, he deserves to be in the hall. Fucking. <laughs> I knew I knew bringing up something about baseball would would trigger you a little bit. It just, it just, <laughs> like, it just pisses me off because the guy bet on his team to do well. Yeah, and and well, it's not like yeah, betting on your team to lose. He didn't throw throw anything, man. He didn't throw a game like he he was betting on his guys to win, and uh, he's still barred from the Hall of Fame. Like Jesus, no man, fuck, come (laughs) on, guys, like yeah, let Rose let Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. I think there would be a lot of he's learned his lesson. There's a lot of shit. Every every year when it comes to the Hall of Fame time, there's the the commentators are all are, that, that's always a debate with the Pete Rose situation. I'm not agreeing with what the guy did, but I mean he didn't he didn't throw a game. Yeah, like he never cheated or anything. Like he he bet on sports, but he bet to win. You can't. Well, he really. I gotta, I gotta Pete. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! This is gonna be another Andre the Giant episode where. We're gonna have to do it in a two. We'll do it in two, but I'm gonna get fucking hammered as. <laughs> oh, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, are we still rolling? Yeah, we're. Let me check. Yeah, we're rolling. We're good. All right, we're good the whole time. <laughs> oh. No sports. Sports in Vegas. Let's get into sports in Vegas. Sports and sports. One of the cool things I liked about sports betting in Vegas, you go to any of the casinos and you go down there and you could set up the sports betting and they had like 50 screens set up where you could watch whatever sport you wanted to watch. So I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not even bullshitting on this. I swear on my life. When I first got to Vegas, um, I used to go bet yeah. on, I bet on college football and college basketball. And I didn't win every week, but I won every month. 
enough to pay my rent for the first six months I lived there. That's that's great. But, and it was it was great, man. And uh, and I'm not like a big I'm not like a big gambler, you know. It's 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 a fun way to yeah. pass time. But my my real reason for going is I didn't know anybody there. I didn't really have any like good friends. Yeah. So it was just a good way for me to go fuck off and waste time. I got to watch all the games. Well, it, that's and a, that's the thing is like I just was basically hanging out and picking who I thought would win. And I ended up doing pretty okay. Well, uh, that's another thing that some people don't realize. So like say if you're visiting Vegas or you're living in Vegas and you don't know it if you're wanting to do some of the entertainment on cheap, the go into the sports book down there and, and say, I'm wanting to watch these college games or these football games or whatever. I'm going to watch them anyway. You can go down there and watch those games and you could drink basically for, for, for free. free. And then you could, the they have uh, usually like appetizers or, or cheap yeah, bar food snacks. type stuff for, for cheap. Yeah. So you can go down there and spend all day watching whatever games, any game. March you want Madness to watch. in Vegas is insanity. Watch mar- or horse races, or yeah. uh, football, baseball, basketball, all that stuff during whatever season it is. I think they get, they even bet on like sumo wrestling down there. So yeah, you, and, you can get into weird prop bets during yeah. Super Bowl, like like what's the coin toss going to be? Yeah, you know, strange. But like how long is the national anthem going to last? Like you can get into odd prop bets. Yeah. But it's down there. You go down there and you could you take fifty bucks down there and make your bets, and then you could eat and drink all day oh, oh yeah. for 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 decent amount of money down there. Well, but for several years, live sports stayed away from Vegas. Yeah, like they did. So the Las Vegas Golden Knights, or they're not Las Vegas, just the Vegas Golden Knights is their actual name. Yeah, uh, they uh, they were a hockey team, or well, they are a hockey team. And they uh, they were the very first major professional sports team in Vegas. Yeah, there they, was a few minor in, league, like a minor league hockey, and I think a uh, D league basketball team was there. And, before and a minor league baseball team. Yeah. Uh, so the Golden Knights started in 2017 as an NHL expansion team. Yeah, and it was a, it was I don't know if you guys are hockey fans. I. I the I, very first year they were they in, made it to the Stanley Cup. Yeah, which is which is. That's like a, an expansion team in the NFL making it to the Super Bowl, which just yeah, it's like the Jacksonville Jaguars making happen. it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, like, it was an incredible year, and it sucks because it was the year after I moved here. But I, mean, I think they and made the playoffs every year. They like they're actually legit. They're good they're, team. they're they're an exceptional hockey team. Like, yeah, they're they're very they're a a, a very top notch. They play out at a T-Mobile Arena there in Vegas. Yeah. yeah. You know, do you know the first concert ever held at T-Mobile Arena? No. It was Guns N' Roses with Slash. They all Guns N' Roses with Slash. Yeah. Great. They all went back to it. Uh, the Las Vegas Aces, WNBA team, they came uh, in 2018. They moved from San Antonio. Okay. Uh, they made it to the WNBA Finals in 2020, but lost to the Seattle Storm. The, the UFC, everybody knows who the UFC is. The UFC got its start in Vegas pretty it much. It did. It got its start in, in Vegas in 1993. You know, so that's one. That's what's like the, the greatest. And I don't know if you couldn't foresee this happening, but but uh, Dana White, when he made that investment, I think he scrounged up $3 million from other investors like he knew and bought... UFC in the early 90s. Yeah. And now it's worth billions. 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 No, it's, it's the largest MMA production in the company. Uh, they have hal- held over 600 events worldwide. Yeah. Um, the very first, which is cool because Keisha's Puerto Rican. Yeah. The very first uh, uh, fight that they ever held outside of the continental U.S. was held in Puerto Rico in Boyamon. Yeah. And that was just here like the last last year wasn't it no shit no they've been all over since then well I, I, I thought the Puerto Rico thing was 1996 oh okay no 1996 they, they held their first fight outside of the continental US and then their first in, international event was in 1998 in Brazil okay sorry I was like I'm the, talking funny I'm getting drunk the, the Gracie's the Royce Gracie yeah yes. uh, the Raiders moved as everybody knows they've they've moved a lot 
They were Oakland uh, Raiders initially. They moved to L.A. And then they moved back to Oakland. And they have played their home games in Allegiant Stadium uh, in Vegas. So, speaking Since of the... 2021. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're fine. Speaking of or the Raiders... 2020, rather. Speaking of the Raiders, I can't remember what year it was, but this was part of the research that I saw. Uh, is it Sheldon Adelson? Is that the owner of the Raiders now? No, it's Mark... Uh, Davis. Mark Davis. Mark Davis. Who'd you say? Sheldon Adelson? I don't even know who that is. He's he's a prominent guy in Vegas. Okay. No, Mark Mark Davis is the Raiders because he's got the weird hair. Yeah. Uh, fuck. Okay. We'll figure out how to cut this in there. So, back in the early days of the Raiders, I think it was in the 80s, early 90s of the of the L.A. Raiders. Uh, whoever the coach was at the time. Madden. No, it wasn't Madden. It wasn't Madden. It was a... Uh, Oh, that it was. Uh, I want to say it was Davis. Whoever, Al Davis. Al Davis was was is Mark Davis's dad, and he was the head coach in the seventies. Okay, and then he then he handed it over to Madden, and then Madden was in the eighties. Okay, until uh, what's the guy's name? He won two Super Bowls. It was it was Davis. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay, the the coach of the Raiders. Yeah, Al Davis. Al Davis. They played an exhibition game. In Vegas in those days. I don't remember what year it was, but they played a game. And I think it was like the Hall of Fame game. It wasn't a Hall of Fame game. It was like a, a pre it was a preseason game they played in Vegas that year or two, whatever yeah. it was. And that was what set the seeds even thirty years ago of how they eventually thought they wanted to move the Raiders to, to Vegas. Vegas. I didn't know that. Um, but I thought it was the coach at the time. Well, Al Davis was a coach owner. Yeah, because then they end up being the who the own the family owned the, yeah. the the team at the time. Yeah, because because John Madden was the coach for like only like eight years. Yeah, and he won a Super Bowl there. Yeah, excuse me, and there and uh, and he did great. You know, he, he's he's John fucking Madden. Yeah, the the start of the Madden curse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But. uh yeah, they moved. They moved in in twenty twenty. They have three Super Bowl championships: uh, seventy six, eighty, and eighty three. Uh, the Oakland A's have a Triple A team in Vegas called the Las Vegas Aviators. Aviators. Now they used to be the fifty ones, named after Area fifty one, which yeah. is just north uh, east of Vegas. Yeah, uh, look up. Uh, so it's it's not publicly disclosed. Look up Groom Lake, Nevada. We'll get into all this. I have a fucking huge... You have a whole thing of... Okay. I have a whole thing to go off on this. There you go. All right. No, so, the, the 51s used to play at Cashman Field, and, and that's yeah. what they, where they played at when we were there. Uh, and it's it's really cool, man. You know, I, I, I'm a big baseball guy. Yeah. So I, I saw Cindergard, I saw DeGrom, I saw Zach Wheeler, I saw Steven Motts. Um, I got Zach Wheeler on my fantasy team. You do have Zach Wheeler. He's, on he's doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw Travis Darno. I saw uh, Young Gomes. I saw Yasmani Grandal. I saw all those guys come up through AAA, and now they're very prominent Major League Baseball players. So you had you had the Las Vegas Aces too. There's the Aces and the Fifty Ones. The Aces are Reno. Reno. Okay. Aces basketball is the WNBA team in Vegas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Reno is the aces of in minor league baseball. Okay, but yeah, it used to be the fifty ones. They were they were all, and this is when the Mets were. So the, now, uh, they're affiliated with the uh, Oakland A's. Oakland, get your shit together, man. Your team sucks. You need to bring oh, who's the dude's name uh, for Moneyball. They need to bring that guy back. Yeah, no shit. Because I I tell you what, Billy Bean. I tell you He's what, there now. B- Billy Bean, uh, I based, so Zach invited me to his fantasy baseball league. I'm this a year. big fantasy baseball guy. I've been playing this since 09. And and I based my strategy for my draft Play off, bean ball. off uh, bean ball and uh, who gets on base. So I, I based my draft status on OBP. You're, still, you're, you're in first place. And right? I, I didn't want to brag, but yeah. No. <laughs> I based my draft strategy on OBP and batting average, 
and I'm in first place right now. But and I'm I'm like 14 games up in first place. So and well, he I'm, gets on base. <laughs> so I'm an idiot because I uh, I liked Fernando Tatis and and Ronald Acuna, and both were on the injured list to start the season. So I have been playing catch up. The whole fucking year. Well, so uh, like my best player uh, uh, Goldschmidt has been batting like 500 all season, and, and he just got hurt like uh, a week and a half ago. So my, now, my heart weeps. For <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I never, I never like to see a baseball player get hurt. I'm a baseball fanatic. Yeah. Um, but uh, it sucks because he's a St. Louis uh, uh, player, and uh, I grew up being a St. Louis fan. My grandma was like, I grew up. Watching Ozzy Smith, my grandma was a huge Ozzy Smith fan, and the the Cards, and so now seeing a Cards player get hurt, it just kind of it kind of hurts my heart a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> anyway, now the the Aviators play in the Pacific Coast League, which is one of the the biggest minor league leagues. Yeah, um, the PCL is great. Um, I I have not been to their new stadium. They used to play at Cashman Field, yeah, which I used to go to quite a bit. And now they play at uh, the um, I don't know what it's called, Las Vegas Stadium or something. Really, oh, Las Vegas Ballpark. Um, I didn't know they built a new stadium. Yeah, okay. it's now by Red Rock. Oh, okay. it's, it's uh, I looked at it. I I checked it out on Google and everything. It's fucking beautiful. Well, it, it, but they call them the Aviators after Howard Hughes, which yeah. I believe you have. All right, so do we want to go into the Howard Hughes spiel real quick on this? Yeah, right, let's do this. Real, let's finish this part. Go ahead. So, All right. uh, as I said, uh, Vegas plays in the PCL. They were formerly known as the Las Vegas 51s after Area 51, and they had Cosmo. Cosmo. Was, was yeah. their, their alien mascot. Uh, they played at Cashman Field. They were affiliated with the Mets from 2013 to 2018. That's when I saw... All my up-and-comers. Man, I was a big 51s fan. Yeah. They, they were phenomenal. Uh, they were the Blue Jays 09 to 2012. I saw quite a few guys. That's when Darno came up. and Okay. You know, they, they were very good. And the Padres from, uh, or Dodgers from 01 to 08. So that was when I was stationed there. And I went to quite a few games, but uh, I can't say I was, like, a big fan. You know, there was just I, I'm a baseball fan, so I want to do a lot of games. But yeah, I didn't really become a fan then. But they were the Padres from '83 to 2000, which is huge. But they they were called the Las Vegas Stars. That's just a lot of years to be affiliated with one team in the minor league. Yeah, it is. So if hopefully you you like this part one of the episode, and then if and uh, we will continue on with part two here in a few days. And then uh, if you like this episode. Uh, the, the for the complete version we'll uh, we'll try to do another one like it here soon hopefully uh, <laughs> we get our shit together a little bit because we're all drunk hell yeah they uh, <laughs> I, I can't even I can't even pronounce word dry right now no, it's, it's been it's, it's like the it's, the, been, it's been an uphill struggle for about two hours the, the Andre the Giant episode all over again yeah. we're drinking over here we, we yeah. finished off our beer in the cooler we, we're out we're down to just liquor now so. <laughs> liquor on the front poker in the rear <laughs> that's right <laughs> there's some uh, some good sage advice right there <laughs> You guys be safe. Have a good evening, a good day, a good good morning, good night, wherever you're at in the world. Uh, we appreciate you so very much. Be safe. We love you guys. Help uh, join us again for the next one. <laughs> yeah.